team. Welcome everybody and the camera is Hello. Hello everybody. And we get people. We have some guests okay. today. Uh, oh yes. Um let's first do the so hey Dan. Hey Sean. Hello. Hi Jan. Hello. Jasmine. Justine. Hello. Hello. Hey, Hello. Hello. Thomas. New Hello, Thomas everyone. French one. <laughs> we got introduce your guest. Oh, uh, this is John. You don't want to be on camera at all? That's welcome, John. Hello, welcome. Oh, we, yeah. Welcome. Hello. 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 Hold on a second, I need to press a button to see if all this. So that's Arian. Arian. And then we have um, Erica. 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 Hi. Hi. Uh, John, right? Right, John. Um, you're John. All right. So we have three guests in the house today. Very nice. All right. So and I, Eric has been here before for a webinar. So that was in the spring, I believe, right? And everybody is yeah. very, very, very advanced. Very good. <clears throat> How is everybody today? Very good. Hey, How are you? Wonderful. Good. Wonderful. The good. universe builds with joy and excitement. Oh, yes. That's good. That's that's the way I like to hear. Joy and excitement. Boy, they're cooler than we are. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Ju Justin started the topic. Yes. Uh, we want to colonize the website. Fashtarcommand.net, I guess. It's it's a new website. Google Fashtar Command. They have thirteen thousand live workers, and um, let's make a colony there. Uh, I tried to create a group, and it wasn't approved because they don't like when pe people just come from outside, don't do, don't speak to anyone, don't know anyone, and start making groups. They want first us to be active, and then uh, become members, and then so sort of we can group. Usually, this kind of big websites, they you have to speak to organizers and be nice to them, and they can do you a favor and create a group for you. But then, within your group, you sort of can moderate the discussion because when you have that many members, discussion has to be moderated very often, almost every time. So that's how it goes. But uh, <clears throat> I think we should go there and a few other NING sites. These are huge sites with thousands of people. We need to make columns there. Like we are good at making columns, right? Yes. All right. Um, so Justin, you were saying that you are in communication with Ashtar, and uh, I guess that's uh, it's nice. That's good. We want to have more, more bigger network. We want to network with uh, people yes. here and people there. We had someone coming from Galactic Federation one or two times. I don't know if it is public, but I mean, we had that. Yes, they're they're within myself as well. Um, there's a lot there's a lot of messages that have been coming through so much lately, um, so much so that like the universe is. I, I felt like I needed to stay here where I'm at. However, everything points to me going on a journey, and the more I've gone with the flow, the universe has provided everything needed for the journey. Good. Tomorrow the journey starts and. Um, I'll actually be in San Antonio with uh, Sister Roxy, so that'll be interesting. Um, being able to go and be with her and meet her and and learn with her and from her and and just see what starts coming in when we're you know in closer proximity to each other. Cool. Good. All right. So uh, I wanted to invite again uh, Ascendant Masters. Uh, I wanted to invite again Jesus. I want to do invite. Um, someone invited people. Uh, the uh, people ship flying over Europe. Uh, so that was an invitation. I also wanted to invite uh, whoever wants whoever wants to communicate to us directly without channeling and telepathy, like like through UFO sightings, through appearances in our rooms, uh, through. Something physical which we can see and touch. So, if anybody who is uh, interested in that kind of communication, direct communication, I would like 
them to channel and give us some some uh, ideas about that. I, I want more, you know, in addition to channeling and telepathy, I want more just to see them, to touch them, that, that sort of thing, or to you know, be physically taken. We want to expand on that. I don't uh, wish to speak on behalf of Sean, but I know that Sean has been very interested in uh, attempting communication with Fandorian energy. So, like that'd be that'd be quite cool to learn a little bit more about who these who these Fandorians are. Yes, um, we we come across them. They're present in the colonies. So, they were. What else? Lakesh, haven't seen that guy for a while. Oh, Lakesh! <laughs> I miss yeah. him. Yeah, Lakesh, Lakesh. Lakesh has been in some personal sessions, but not here with us at the webinar so much lately. Ah, is he the one that speciali specializes in um, dreams and astral projections? Like he knows about them. He knows about them. I'm not sure if he's a specialist or not, but I know he. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> Uh, I don't know what he's a specialist in, really. What would Lakesh be a specialist in? Uh, celebrations. He knows other people. That's his biggest thing, I think. And celebrations. Uh, their way of doing things is to sit there wherever they are, levitate wherever they are, and astral travel anywhere, technologically astral travel anywhere. That's what they do. They explore the galaxy by remaining on their in their world. Which, you know, anyone of or us should be able to do that, right? right? Just sit in your room and meditate and ask for travel. That's what Lakesh does. Mm -hmm. But he also levitates. <laughs> meditate yeah. and levitate. Meditates and levitates. Meditates and levitates. So that's so that's what Lakesh has been showing me in my dream state. I've I've been going to the plan I've been going to the planet a lot a lot lately and it feels just like that where just I just feel like I've been in meditation, I feel like I've been flying, I feel like I've been celebrating. Oh, it's been so much fun. Yes. So much fun. I I literally understand I've been multi locating, I understand I've been completely remote viewing, I understand I'm completely fully telepathic, like every every ability that we consider to be ESB has been awakened, not only awakened but fully activated and integrated. And on top of that, there's new ideas and new energies that are adding strengths to these, as well as just new ideas of love, new ideas of love that that'll be more beneficial than interesting. That well, some of the ideas of love. I'm interested in that. What Same is, here. Same here. <laughs> new ideas of love is, is a great thought. What is it? A, a dimensional thing, or uh, is it it's actually a feeling, or is it a uh, just a feeling? It's just simple, simple truths, simple loves. Just when I hear people speak now, even if it's in anger, all I hear is just I would need love. But I'm not sure what kind of love I need right now. Okay, well, let me reflect the love that you're showing me. Oh, okay. I and also, I'm going to do it the most loving way possible. And then I'm going to show a couple other ways of love. And then we'll ask together which way is the most comfortable for both of us to live in balance. Mm -hmm. Okay. Talking about love, I just received a comment that it's comment, they kind of answered to that comment on YouTube, and that's why I was a little bit late, and then there was technical difficulty. <laughs> well, the comment was on Jesus' video. Somebody said something about sin and blasphemy. How do you pronounce it? Blasphemy? Blasphemy. Blasphemy. I had to Google what it is. I know what sin is a little bit, but... Sin and blasphemy. Okay. But, you know, they were saying that, you know, Whatever I was saying about Jesus was uh, what was that word? Uh, blasphemy. <laughs> so basically, I said that I usually don't sin because at any moment, what I do is I do it because it's my choice and believe it's the best way I can do it. I always have to balance and make the choices. So I never sin because I I'm afraid of something. You know, 
it's a balance and it's, it's a choice. So sit is not very much in my uh, vocabulary because I, I do it because I'm nice and I think it's whatever I do is nice, right? Mm -hmm. So, but in, in terms of Christianity, I really like Christianity. As a Jew, I like Christianity. Uh, like for me, Jesus is an energy. It's a personality, an entity, and an energy which helps ascension. And that's what I learned from many channelings, especially the ones by another Jew, Robert Shapiro. He channeled Jesus and his uh, disciples. And the main idea there is that Jesus is an energy which comes to different civilizations to help them ascend. So, and Jesus comes to this world many times, and one of these incarnations is famous, but other incarnations and just visitations are not as famous. He can come as anybody. He doesn't have to look like Jesus. And in this way, he can come at any time point, way in the past, in Sumerian time, way in the future, at any time point, and help us to ascend, basically, by, by you know, doing whatever he does, teaching and other things, and saving and healing. So I like that in that way, and I like Christianity as a religion because it unites people and it connects people to this energy. So, so I think it's it's great. I also speak from my perspective as I think I was incarnated as, and was a priest in different time periods, like Atlantean priest, Atlantean scientist. Jewish priest. I know genetically I come from Jewish rabbinic, rabbinic tradition. Uh, my ancestors were Kabbalah, enlightened Kabbalah teachers, and one of them is very famous. Uh, if you know uh, Maharal of Prague, uh, uh, Yehuda Lloyd, uh, the creator of the Golem, uh, I, I come from from that rabbinic line. So. When I look at the church, I, I'm always on the other side. I'm kind of in, in the in their how do you call it congregation, and I'm also a priest. I I feel myself aligned with the priests. And I wanted to tell you a joke, which makes you maybe much more peace with the religion. Um, it's a Jewish joke. You have to know the word shiksa. Shiksa is a is a <laughs> word for non-Jewish woman. It's kind of how what's the word? Uh, Diminutive, a little bit. Uh, it's non-Jewish. It's not arts. So, so a joke is, and also you have to know that Jews celebrate God from the end of Friday, the first time the star rises on Friday. It's Shabbat, Shabbat starting, and to the first time the Saturday star rises. So from that time to that time, you have to stop working and devote anything that you do to God. So work is prohibited. You don't work. You don't even drive and uh, and some. And you don't touch the computer. Uh, unless it is for God, I guess. <laughs> uh, I don't know, maybe. But some Jews even don't uh, light the fire because it's considered to be work. In any case, the joke goes that a young man wanted to marry a shiksa. And he wanted a blessing from his father. And his father said, no, 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 don't marry shiksa. It's, it's wrong. But finally, the young man gets his way and bring, marries Shiks and brings her home. And they live upstairs. And after, you know, after whatever celebration and uh, marriage, whatever, how do you call it, wedding, uh, Saturday morning, he comes down late and his father meets him and he says, My son, every Saturday morning, you were helping me to. Uh, uh, help with my financial books, uh, record keeping, how do you call them, uh, for my store. And this Saturday morning, you wake up late. Why didn't you help me? And his son, son said, My wife said, actually, his wife, she said, took Judaism, and it's, it's called took Judaism. So, so she made it through Jewish tradition. And she said, My wife says, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's not appropriate to work on Saturday. And his father said, I told you, don't marry Shiksa. <laughs> <laughs> and the logic is when you're on the other side, when you're a priest you look at the same thing from a different angle, many things are just given for people to many prohibitions for people at all times to help them like not to eat pork because maybe pork was dirty and infectious and 
uh, not have sex in the wrong way because it was a way to spread infection, right? And circumcision, it is not, was given, I think, by the aliens specifically at that time to prevent spreading of infection, to prevent cancer, how the papilloma cancer. So, so it's, and it was given as, as a sign of covenant with God. So we have covenant with, with God through circumcision only to prevent infection, but now we are the, you know, we still have the covenant, although we, mm -hmm. yeah, although circumcision is, uh, is, a uh, just purely medical thing. So, looking from that perspective, I like Christianity. Christianity has given the world a lot, and unlike other religions, they've given the world a lot. And now we merge them together in a creative way. And I invite my sin and masters and prophets from the past to speak to us. And what we do here is my way of doing religion. That's you know that's my religious outfit, and I'm a priest here. And that's uh, and we have a wonderful congregation doing new religion, which is based on new truth we learned. Mm -hmm. uh, forgive me for that, that, but that's my my approach. And uh, my, my my I know my vibration is not very high, not very low, right in the middle. I'm sometimes poetic and sometimes scientific, and that's my way of uh, serving uh, the high energies. I invite these high energies to come through and to speak to us. Okay. Well, first of all, I want to say something about, you had somebody write that it was sinful and blasphemous. I came from a religious background where I am uh, went to United Wesleyan College, and my degree is in theology. So um, they would, I can understand where they are from because they are told that, that anything that doesn't go along with the Bible or what they turn, uh, what is in there or and there's only a certain amount of people that can be saved, only those that accept Jesus can be saved. And But you see, that's many of those things have been um, turned around by many people throughout the thousands of years that the Bible has been written. And the truth is that Spirit loves everyone. Love is divine. We should be getting along one with another. And we shouldn't have to worry about um, uh, many of the things that that are in the Bible because do we stone people anymore? No. Do we um, do we cast them out of the city anymore? No. Do this uh, fire and brimstone hail down from the sky when somebody does something wrong? No. Um, there's many things in there that just are not happening in this day and age. This is a different day and age. That was their culture, and we've moved through many, 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 many cultures since then. And what is good for that culture is not good for this culture. Because if we went back to stoning people and doing things of that nature, what, what good would that do? We're moving forward. That is the whole key. We are moving forward as a spiritual community. And as a spiritual community, you give up some of those barbaric ways. You learn to give unconditionally. You learn to love. You see, when that person wrote, you're sinful and blasphemous and everything, was that out of love? Do you think? Was that a loving gesture? Was that the Christianity that you want to be? to judge others and call them names and put stigmas on them and make them feel bad. No, that's not where we're at. Yeah, I, was, I think I've had it on here or something like that. Do you all understand that? Do you agree with that, actually? Um, somebody was just talking, I didn't know who. But um, that's, we're, we come into a new age of light and understanding. And, and the barbarity of somebody calling names and judging is beyond us at this point. All right, with that, is there any questions? I just muted everybody. Oh. <laughs> well. <laughs> I, was saying, I was saying I'll be J.C. Barra, the one that will offer, you know, peace in stoning with the sacred herb. You know, it's a different type of stoning, this, this type of age. It's a different type of fire and brimstone. 
you know, so <laughs> this is how I found my happiness and how I found my, you know, my oneness, you know, who's to judge it, not, not me, and now that I, ha that I stopped judging it, I right. found my oneness, my wholeness, my singularity, and this is how it looks, <laughs> this is what made me, and hey. I don't, I don't like drugs, they make me stupid. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, brother. That you're 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 the type that doesn't need it. You already I can already tell you're able to reach that. With me, I needed something to completely break myself down so as to find how high I really can reach and just really understand that I truly am limitless. Um, All right, Jeff, I respect your I respect your choice. I hope you will find a way to reach it without drugs. And let, let's go to the channel then now. All right. Okay. Please mute yourself because it helps the quality of the sound. Hey. Uh, I don't like drugs. It makes me stupid. <laughs> hey. That's okay, brother. That you're, you're you're the type that doesn't need it. You're already. I can already tell you're able to reach that. Welcome. How are you? What was that? I uh, just pressing buttons on the I, on the telephone on Android. So, it sounded interesting to me, but in a way, it sounded a little dark, Ooh, dark white. But how are you today? All right, the fall is uh, is here. The yes. leaves are coming a little uh, coming down, and we have a nice crowd around. Yes. Ah. Yes. Welcome, everyone. Is there any questions for me today? I guess the question which Alien brought was, when the soul comes into the body, at which point of, between, whatever, birth, around the birth? It depends on what species you are. Hello, human. Human species, it depends. Now, let me, under, let me qualify that and let you understand that it depends on the belief of the parents. Ah. Because when the soul comes in, it has to be, the parents have to know it's there. It cannot be there unless the parents know that it is there. Because they are the ones that bring it in. It can come in at conception. It can come in in three months. It can come in in two days. It can come in whenever they realize that this child has a soul. Do you understand? They, you are gods. Do you understand your God spirit? You each have a God spirit, a God light, a spirit within, and you are able to give, put the soul there when you realize that it's there. If it is not there, you will not realize it. Do you understand? Or maybe you assume that the soul is there as soon as that it comes into the that conception is conceived. Well, then that it is there. 
it is whatever you believe that it comes in before the child is born. Yes, Max. It sounds agnostic. It's not agnostic. It is gnostic. <laughs> I, I invite discussion. On yes. 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 Would you be willing to speak on our celebrations and my journeys to your planet recently in Dream State? There are all kinds of celebrations happening on my planet at all times. Because there are... Which celebration were you in? With my goddaughter? Just the celebration of learning that I'm a, I'm a part of you. Uh, oh, that yes. You're a part of my father figure. Yes, well, you, we, we were together in the sense that I introduced you to my jewelry and told you the histories of many things on our planets. We celebrated the fact of unity. We celebrated the fact of, of sharing f different things and ideas. I introduced you to many people. Do you remember all these things? Yes. Yes. So, therefore, there was many celebrations. The celebration of meeting is a, a certain thing, and the, the, the celebration of learning, and the celebration of history, and the celebration of friendship, and love, and unity. Many things. What would you like me to expound upon? I feel as if I've been exploring dark, darkness as light and light as darkness and transmuting all into love, unified love, unconditionally unified simple truths and love. It all can be energized by love. Love is an energy that charges things. It can charge the darkness, it can charge the light, it can charge neutrality. Do you understand? All things can be charged by love and the emotion of love, the existence of purity and existence of the pure, which is love. It is all can be charged with it. Love is separate from the light and separate from the darkness, but it is charged by it when you do it, when you give it a value. Do you understand? You can give darkness a light value. You can give light a darkness value. But the charging of love is something different. I need to leave in, in a few minutes. I would like to invite uh, new members who never spoke to the to Lakesh uh, to, to step up and, and speak to them. I think Thomas is new, uh, then the dude in space is new, and I think yeah, Earthling never spoke to Rakesh also. Gee. And, uh, and Angela never spoke. Uh, Angela, you spoke once, I think. So please, uh, go ahead. Uh, Thomas, if you have anything to say. Well, hello, Lakesh. It's really hello. nice to talk to you. <laughs> hello! <laughs> you sound like very much energy. Yes. <laughs> what is your question? Or what would you like to say? Perhaps it's not a question. I will be more a statement, but maybe you can enlighten me on that. Um, I have the feeling that um, that I'm kind of blocked from exceeding information, accessing information. Let me tell you something about blockages. They can be removed easily. When you believe that they are not there anymore, they are unblocked. When the energy in a box, uh, when Jim does Reiki, I watch him unblock the system of energy that flows throughout the body. How do you think he does that? His intention is to unblock that area with energy, right? So you can have that same effect on yourself. Unblock yourself. Tell yourself that you are able to get beyond this point. Let yourself know that the only thing holding you back is you. Because that is the only thing holding you back. 
There is no one putting a block in your brain. There is nobody coming to you saying, uh oh, uh, uh, you can't do that. There is no one there but you. And so therefore, once you let the block go, you tell yourself that the block is gone and meditate, do an intention meditation that the block will be gone. And it will be gone. Because you, with your spirit inside, with your fullness of light, can do this. There is a reason why you have blocked yourself. There is a reason why you have blocked yourself. There, there is something you have to learn before you move forward, obviously. So yeah. Therefore, yeah. take this opportunity and find out what that is. And then you can unblock yourself and move forward. Hmm. Okay. Very good. Um, next, uh, the dude in space, I guess. Dude in space, I love that name. <laughs> uh, yes, guys. Hello. Hello, Lakesh. Hello, dude in space. Where at in space are you, dude? <laughs> Actually, you can call me you. Uh, is the most appropriate uh, reference. Yes. I don't really have a question. I just wanted to say thanks for all the very helpful information you've given us all. It's been uh, uh, quite enlightening. Thank you, you. Thank you for who you are as well, because that is important. We all play a very important role up here and down here and everywhere that we are. We should all play our, our perfect role in this, this ascension. And I know that you will. I like your smile. You look good. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. I would like to invite uh, Yark Yorkin J to speak. Yes. Yark. What was it? J. 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 Hi. Hello. Um, yeah, I had an experience um, in August. I uh, I believe I I channeled for the first time, and uh, I just. I'd like to see if maybe I can get some confirmation from that. I believe I may have channeled a past and future life of mine. Uh, it was a past life, not a future life. Usually, you do not channel future lives because they have they they have already have been uh, formed, but not in a way that you can see them. So, in the past, yes, you did channel a past life. You channeled a past life where um, many interesting things about it because it is associated with this life that you are living right now. Mm -hmm. Many things that you will learn from that life are important to you in this life. Do you understand that? Yes. Very good. And yes, you did. Channel a past life. And that is good. That is the beginning of channeling. That is the beginning of your awareness of your lesson in this world, in this world that you are in. Hmm. Um, when I did it, I was actually uh, tripping on mushrooms. If, it I was like intended, if you intended it to be a, a past life, or if you intended it to be something more spiritual, then that is why it became such. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to know if I could channel more easier without tripping. Well, let's see. Bashar says this. Once you have experienced what the trip is like, you no longer need the tool, which mm. is mushrooms. You would only need to redo the experience. Do you understand that? So yeah. if you reach that experience during meditation, you do not need the mushrooms or the chemical that is harmful sometimes to the body. You just need the mental aspect of it. Do you understand? Yes, I do. Thank you. You do not need any kinds of drugs for that kind of experience. Now, some like the tool because mm -hmm. it makes them feel like the tool is there, so I will get the same benefit from the tool. But if, even without the tool, you can still reach the benefit. If you are within that means because you do have the the feelings are still in you the memory of it is still with you the understanding of the feeling is still with you the opening of the channel of the brains and the perceptions are still with you because once you have opened these perceptive channels 
do they really close again? I think not. I think that you use them in a different way than when you use them when you were when you were feeling high is the word. Hmm. You use them now in your regular life in a different way because they will always be with you. These experiences, these openings up channels are always there. After they are open, they do not close unless you wish them to close. Do you understand? Once you have opened them, it is difficult to close them, in fact. Okay. Pandora's box. In some ways, Pandora's box is not quite accurate, because that is all negative. But Pandora's box, in the sense of good things coming out of it. There was good things that came out first. Yes, yes. Just depends how many times you want to open the box, I guess. Yes. <laughs> it's like opening the box with candy, you can't close it. Yes, until the candy's gone. <laughs> I wanted to invite people in, uh, present physically in this room to speak. Um, who wants to speak first? I just want to do a quick, quick follow-up about... Uh, yes! Uh, yes! I am. Namaste, Lakesh. No, I'm not uh, About um, to get to get to the same vibration as you, when you were on drugs. Yes. Um, to remember how you were thinking. Um, to like meditate on that and and remember how you were feeling at that time. Yes. That would bring bring it back. Yes, exactly. And bring you to the same vibration. As Excellent. Yes, that is a good way to explain it. Thank you. Okay. Any any other way? Oh. It is any way that you can bring back the experience. Some people are able to bring it back just by thinking about it. Other people would need an intention to meditation. Other people would need the tool again until they realize that the tool is not necessary. But your belief system plays something in this. Because if you believe you need the tool, you still need it. Yes. And of course, at the same time, to not really strive for it, to let it go. Thank you. Because I had this experience recently. You were able to bring back the experience without the tool. Yes. Yes, it is possible. But only once. And now that I do try, that's I probably, have a problem to let go. That's probably what you needed then. It was the, the confirmation that you could bring back the experience without the tool was enough for you to understand that you can do that at any time, and it wasn't necessary after that. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yes. Max, there's another new member, Thomas. Oh, Thomas already spoke. I wanted to invite uh, Arian to speak. Thomas okay. Yeah. Arian? Hi, just uh, two things. First, I used to be addicted to the hokey pokey, but I turned myself around. <laughs> and that's what it's all about. But basically, I wanted to uh, find out. I'm very excited for the first contact, so I'm wondering if anyone's got the true information about when the first contact is. First contact is very interesting because everyone has a different idea of what first contact should be, first of all. And second of all, they have a different idea who's ready and who's not ready. And the third thing they have a problem with is where they're going to do it. And the next problem is uh, they just don't know when would be the best time. There are many problems with first contact right now because nothing is been agreed upon, and there was a time when it was close, but then another idea was thrown into the mix, and there it goes again. And so, first contact, my dear sir, will be soon as it can be. <laughs> and that, saying that, I mean to say that next year, perhaps, but I'm not thinking that it will be next year, because those that are preparing it are still in turmoil about several different things. 
I am so glad, however, that they have gotten rid of the ideas of changing the sky colors and different ridiculous things like that in order to make us feel more calm or you feel more calm or whatever. Uh, it's, that would not work anyway. But the idea of first contact when it comes will be a wonderful and beneficial thing. Frightening for many, but mostly beneficial. And I hope it comes soon. Thank you. Uh, Jacob, would you like to speak? I'd like to say it's nice to be with you again. Um, being in the same thank room you. as you, I can feel my vibration raising. Ah, uh, thank you. Feeling, oh, you're yes. so sweet. That is very nice. And I've had a year of um, well, learning to know myself, getting rid of a lot of garbage. Um, I feel like I'm following the yellow brick road. Yes. I would just like to know if you have any messages for me. Ah, messages for you. You are, you are actually moving forward very well, and you're in a happier place than you have been. Mm -hmm. So it is a good thing, and plus you, you are very proud of your children today now for some reason. Um, I'm not sure why you are proud of them, but I feel that pride for your children in you right now, and I am happy for you that that is good. And um, there is something, it, it just seems like you see a lot more positive things coming down the way right now than you did before and that is a wonderful thing mm -hmm. and you and it is wonderful for you to join us today because this will only reinforce all those things that you were thinking Thank you. because now that is why you were here is for me to reinforce those thoughts within you that are very positive at this time mm -hmm. very very positive keep moving in that direction you are a very positive person in your heart and when things get you down you feel guilty about it feeling down. Do not feel guilty, but just say, I am human. I am human, and I will move forward, and it may take a couple mouths, but you will get there. Your happiness is important. Your happiness is important. And don't feel guilty for being feeling bad. Okay. That's not, not what feeling bad is about. Feeling bad is to let you appreciate all the wonderful things that are coming. Thank you. There you go. Um, John, would you like to speak? Yes. Uh, I like Ashton. Hello. It's beautiful to be in your presence. Thank you. Um, looks like I lost my question. That's okay. I, I had a question about telepathy. Yes. Just curiosity. If a civilization is fully telepathic, yes. Does it? Can you still have private thoughts? Oh, certainly. Telepathy does not mean total exposure. Telepathy means that you, when you meet someone, you do not have to say hello. They can say hello with their emotions, a vision, a thought. It does not mean that you are dwell, delving into their soul. No. You are, you are actually just seeing the outside of, their, of the perception, their intents, their goodness, and maybe a couple thoughts that, that are on their mind right at the moment. However, in order to see the full internal part of someone, you would have to lock chakras and they would have to give you permission. So you would have to lock chakras and you would have to be given permission to see those things that are within. So no, yes, the telep telepathy is beautiful. You can communicate without speaking, but you do not have to reveal everything about yourself. But many things are known to, about you when you meet someone telepathically. You'll know their nature. You'll know their emotional state. You'll know that if they are confused or upset or whatever things that is, but you will not know perhaps the reason why. Or you may not know what had happened to cause these emotions. But you will know these emotions, whereas on Earth, unless someone has a bad expression or whatever, they will, will, will not be able to tell sometimes if someone is hurting. But even if you find someone smiling, a big smile, and you're telepathic and they're telepathic, you will know that they are hurting if they are hurting. Is there any other questions? Yes, I believe uh, Sean had a question. Sean! 
And all the cash, infinite love and infinite blessings to you. I love you, Sean. How are you? I am very good. I have uh, two questions. My first question is, have I been in telepathic contact with you in the past two weeks? Yes. And I myself. You, you speak to me quite a bit. More than anyone else, really. Uh, you, uh, not, not lots and lots, but you speak to me more than anyone else, and I do hear you, yes. And I appreciate the good thoughts that you send to me. I appreciate that. And my second question is, thank you for that answer. My second question is, how is your granddaughter doing? Oh, she is marvelous. She is at an age now. I, I have to say I'm a little sad because she is at an age now where I cannot spend so much time with her. She must start her pre-studies and learn what she, she is to, to be doing because they're giving her many uh, what you would call aptitude tests and she is going to find out what area of study to move into first. So, but this will take some time because they do many, many aptitudes before they ask ask the child where they want to head first. And they let them know the results, and they let them know, uh, you know, what things they feel would be good. However, the child has the final answer. Wherever they want to go first, they will go first, because this is their highest excitement at that time. Lakesh, quickly to jump in on that, you were saying about the aptitude test. Yes. Surely if if your civilization is completely telepathic, then you could cheat across. You could have friends and you'd be like, ah, here's the answers, pass it across the table kind of thing. But cheating is still cheating. So, so in order to give the most positive and non-biased opinions, tests are the best. Let me tell you why. Because I see many things in my granddaughter, and I would choose one for her that I thought would be her greatest resonation. It may not be. But if I were to, to look at her, I see things that I think she would be great doing. But yet, if someone an unbiased takes these tests for her, gives her these tests, and lets her do the deciding at the end, even after all the knowledge is acquired, it turns out that their highest resonation, they do well there, but they finally, eventually get to the area where they are most happy and satisfied, and this is what we are looking for. They must find their own route. We cannot form it for them. There are lessons for them to be learned in their life for not choosing the exact right one. Do you understand? So. Yeah. Even on our planet, there are lessons to be learned through the lives so that when we come back in our next life, we will be understanding of the lessons that we have learned through our chakras they come. Do you understand? Yeah, absolutely. Wonderful. Thank you, Lakesh. You're welcome. Hey, Lakesh. Hey, Kelly. <laughs> it's Caitlin, but, you know, I have different names all over, so... Yeah, you were three different names. I was, I have, okay, Caitlin, right? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, I have a question. It's kind of like <laughs> lovey-dovey, but... Um, that is always a wonderful question, yes. <laughs> I like um, it. Yeah, um, I've been having these actual projections or dreams of this guy that... Um, that I kind of know in reality. I never really spoke to it. Like, I have, but when he has spoken to me, it's like he approached me kind of, but I've been having, like, these astral projections where, like, I'm with him, and it's kind of like we're in a relationship or something, he's, like, all flirty and stuff, but, like, what does that mean? Like, it, it, I literally every night keep having these astral projections, and it's just, like, I don't know what it means. Does that mean something? Yes, it does have a meaning, uh I'm not sure that you want everyone to know what it means, but um, I'll tell you just on the edge what it means. It means that you need some physical love. You need some touch. You need some comfort, and you need some holding. There is something that happened not long ago that makes you long for these kind of things right now. And that is all right. That is lovey-dovey. <laughs> 
but without those things, then the dreams seem to help you get through this without the touch and the lovey dovey Because this person is actually touching you and holding you and making you feel better, or at least speaking to you about touching you. So if it is a need within you that all humans, all aliens, for the most part, not all, there are a couple insectoids that don't need to touch, but <laughs> they do need to scratch each other. But <laughs> they, they do, they, this is a time where you need some affection. Uh, I see. Yeah, I don't know. I was kind of like, what does this mean? Like, why do? Why is it him? You know, like I, like he's cute. Oh, he's but I don't know someone, what that means. He is someone that resonates well with you. You have created someone that resonates well with you, so that affection can be um, working. Ah, so that's like kind of like a sign that like, hey, this is a guy that's kind of compatible with you. Yes. Oh, I see. No, I just have to work on how the hell to approach him, I guess. I don't know how to do that. I'm scared. Do not be frightened. Because you will find that you, as you have created him, he is. Ah, uh, I see. Thank you. You are welcome. And um, also, telepathy. Yes. I, I feel like I have developed it really well. Um, I don't usually use it that much because of like I'm busy, but um, I've developed it to the point where I can touch the beings, you know. So I was wondering, since I can touch them, does that mean like I can literally like, like if I develop telepathy enough, would I be able to like taste things or something? Because <laughs> if I could touch them, that's kind of an extreme thing for me. I mean, telepathy goes as far as you let it go. Now. To taste things, I'm not sure what you mean by that. Like, taste and smell, you know, like those senses, like if... Oh, yes. Like, if someone yeah. sets you a vision from their telepathy, you will, if they have those parts added to it, you will definitely smell, feel, hear those things. They can send you pictures and small snippets, snippets of movies or videos or whatever you want to call it. It seems like that, that you're watching a small snippet. It, it won't last very long, but you will be able to taste, feel, touch, and it will be part of you for that few moments that it is running, that they send it out. <laughs> you understand? So, yes, yes, you will be able to taste, feel, smell, yes. It depends on how good the telepath is at vision, uh, visualizing and creating. Mm -hmm, yeah, I, I just enjoy... Um hearing and touching, like just holding people's, um, the celestial beings' hands, because it's, I love it, like you guys, some of you guys feel kind of funny, like kind of like jello, <laughs> but it's, it's cute, I love it. There's always room for jello. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I think I heard that once, but yes, yeah, see right there again, you are touching, you have a great need for touch and being touched at this time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll talk to you in the future, though, tele with telepathy. Because I, whenever I talk to you, you're always like, hey, how are you? And I'm like, oh. oh Caitlin, you are so sweet. You are very pure in many senses. So I like that. Thank you. You're well, welcome. Um, uh, how are the elementals treating you? Um, well... They, they're giggling at me a lot because they know what's going on in my life. Um, but I just spoke Let to you about... You know, let them touch you, yes. Yeah. They are um, because you need touch, and they know what kind of touch you need, so... <laughs> Elementals are sweet, but they're not dumb. <laughs> oh, no. They enjoy playing with my cat a lot. And my cat, he's at the point where he's trying to hide in the closet, so he tries opening it. <laughs> it's funny, though. He does really like them, though. <laughs> yeah, he just has that tough guy act on, you know? So. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Kate. Okay. You're welcome. Okay. Hello, Lakesh. This is Sabrina. Sabrina. How are you? How are you? Good, good. I have a few questions from other people. Ah, yes. So, sure. so I'll start with Olivia. Um, do you know you know her? 
I could know her. Maybe. Okay, it's Olivia Paris. Ah, uh, yes, I know Olivia. Okay, Paris. all right. She's been having this reoccurring dream for about four to five months. And in the dream, um, there's lots of activity, and oftentimes I'm um, in the water. I'm just baffled because it's the same place, and it's every single night for months now, even when I take a nap. When I wake up, she, she says, I'm just confused because until now my dream life was different. Um, or she but the, the last time she said um, she was facing me, and uh, she was in. Pr we were in prayer. Yes, that was the guided meditation, perhaps in the colonies. Also, they have added a swimming pool to the colonies because it has been found that that is the greatest form of exercise for humans. So she has been spending some time in the second colony in the swimming pool. So that is one thing that she is doing. However, she has been to the telepathic uh, colony as well. So this is part of what she is seeing, and the prayers are the guided meditation that happened before every class. Although I'm not there, I can come holographically and look in on some of the classes. They let me do that. But I have not been there in, in the flesh. Okay, okay, so that's her reoccurring dream, because uh, she doesn't right. remember anything else but that one. Yes, she's, I think she does like to swim, and so that is a memory from the colonies. Okay, she says there was also mountains and a building. That I do not know about. Hold on. Perhaps. I do not know where the mountains and buildings come from, but uh, I would ask maybe to Kerr about that. But I do okay. know the swimming pool is probably from the second colony. Okay. Um, now I have one from Troy. Sabrina? Mm -hmm. uh, can we just uh, let Angela speak before you take... Oh. Because she has been uh, wanting to speak for a couple of times, and she always disconnects. Okay. It doesn't matter to me. Who's next? Um, my question is, um, I've had, um, I felt a couple aliens around me. I'm just wondering who they are and kind of what they're doing around me. When did you feel them? Today? Or was it yesterday? They just, um, just recently, um, just, uh, I can, I feel them around me. Yes, they're there right now. I can, when you flash on, they're in the background. So, yes, you do have a couple aliens around you. They've been with you, what, four or five days now? Or maybe you've only felt them for a couple of days. But they've been there for about four days, they said. And um, four or five days, your time. And they're just watching you. You, There was a, some situation at your work that they were, you were training children. Training children. Is this, is this something that you do? Teach children? Yes, I work at a school. Very good. Then you will... They were watching your technique on training children. And at nighttime, they were wondering what you do on your spare time. But they were there in your classroom. That is why they're mostly around you right now. That's very interesting. Um, my second question is um, just in, like, in regards to like a, a relationship. Do you, like, um, kind of interested in someone. Can you tell me anything about it? Um, a relationship. Uh, there is... One moment, please. Let me think about that one. Oh, yes. Um, what would you like to know about that? What is the what is the what, what is the thing about the relationship you want to know? It it is something that's fairly new to you, is it not? It is fairly new, and yeah. 
had any information that you could give me on it. At this time, I know that it is fairly new and that it is just still in um, early stages, but uh, there is... Um, I will speak to you about that in a, in a, more, personal, a more personal situation. Yes. There is there is some it, good things and some bad things there. That is what I must say. Good things and bad things, but it, mostly okay. good. Yes. Okay. Um, okay. Um, I don't have anything else to say right now. Very good. Okay. Um, Sabrina. Okay. Yes, um, Troy Cotran. Yes, he had. He had a, yes. He had. A, yeah, but he knows you work at a school. No, the aliens are. Um, Angela, can you mute yourself, please? Okay. Um, so he said uh, la, last night I had. Oh, wait, wait, not that one. He told me I could skip that one. In 1979, on a spiritual retreat to a cabin on on Lake Coeur d'Alene in Idaho, I took, I think I experienced an encounter with two Pleiadians. Can you confirm whether or not this happened? And if so, um, what it actually took place there? I've never been able to recall the full event. You were on, what lake were you on? What lake was that? Uh, lake Coeur d'Alene. Coeur d'Alene. And what, what state is that in their country? Idaho. 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 One moment. You did meet two aliens, but they erased your memory because they did not want you to remember that you met them, however you still did. But that is all right. They were, it was nothing bad. They were doing soil samples and a few other testings on some interesting things because that area is actually volcanic at one point, I believe, and they were checking something out. So uh, I do not know the full story there because they are Pleiadians and they do not tell me everything. So I can only tell you what I know and that it was them that they did not want you to see them though. But you did. You okay. remember them. So were they Pleiadian or they don't want you to say that? Yes, they were Pleiadian. Oh, okay. Um, another question he had... <clears throat> He he had asked for DNA upgrade and and uh, the implant, and he wanted to know if he also visits the colonies physically. I don't know if you can answer that, but to carry the one for to to let you know about the hybridization program. But okay. I have that you have been to the colony that, because I saw you once. Yes. Okay. That um, I can. That, that part I know. All right. Um, I'll leave the rest for Tucker then. Um, just a quick question from me, uh, Lakesh. Yes. Uh, yesterday, um, I believe I channeled an entity. Um, I was in the car, and I'm not sure from what civilization. You are in the car. One moment. Are you sure it was not an angel? I'm not sure. <laughs> I believe you. You seem to do angels in the car. <laughs> <laughs> because you are moving, and they can they they like to be moving when they talk to people. So sometimes I believe you were. It was an angel, but I don't know who. Let's see who. Mm -hmm. 
and I, they are not giving their name right now, but it was an angelic spirit that you were. Yes, it was angelic. Yes. Oops. Oh. Had to change position there for a minute. Ooh. Oh. Okay. <laughs> and then um, I've been speaking this. I've been speaking this language lately, and I was wondering if you could just tell me real quick what. What, uh, oh, yes, it's, a, it's, a, it's an offshoot of Octorian, but it's not Octorian. But oh, okay. it, is, it is like a Fendorian language. That, Oh, okay, because they've been around me lately, so... Fendorian? Yes, that's the Fendorian language, yes. Okay, all right. Good. Okay, thank you. You're now, welcome. Thank you very much. Um, Hayen? Hayen! Uh, actually, they agree that I could go first. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Hi, Lakesh, this is Safira. Hi, Sophia. Nice to see you. Nice to see you as well. Thank you very much. I have a um, big a general question and a personal question. The personal question is, about a month ago, I had so, like a round spot of blood on my pillow, but no sign of anything from me, pers like anything that would happen to me or my head or anything. And I was wondering if um, anyone had done any work on me. Any of my ET, the ET realm. <laughs> if you could, there was there was a small thing. They removed a they removed one implant and replaced it. Perhaps the lot of blood was before the removal, because there would be no blood for the replacement. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering about that. Yeah, why? Well, I didn't see anything on my head or anything that would have. No, I cannot find anything. No, they. It's the a spot of blood will come out with the removal, and that is all. Oh, I see. It came out with the removal. Okay. So the the new the new implant is for what? It was just replaced. They gave you a better, a more advanced implant. Uh, uh, is that the implants that people can transport physically with at some point? Of course, everyone has those now. Yes. Oh, awesome. Okay, and um, am I? St I haven't had any dreams of being on the colonies. Am I still going? Yes, a lot of people have not had. Those that have memories of the colony have good, fairly clear memories at this time. And those that are not having any recollection of the colony are still being affected by the reformulation of the last thought being put back into the head. But okay. do not worry, that will change. So. Okay, and I would like to be part of the fourth channeling colony. Am I going there at all? You will be going there. You, I haven't seen you there though. Yeah, where do you remember where you've seen me lately, or have you? Uh, mostly in colony one and two. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Um. All right. I have my general question is this, uh, Chakir mentioned that all of the civilizations around us, the E.T. civilizations, have started in, can you hear me, there's a lot of noise, oh, Rakesh, are you still there? Yes, I am here. <laughs> okay, that there's, um, that all the civilizations started as 3D and ascended. And I was curious in your civilization if that was the case. Who helped you ascend? Was it somebody like Jesus? Was it other teachers? How it did someone who else other than Jesus? But it was someone similar. But there are more than one saviors that go around to different planets. And as as per usual, at the beginnings things were very dark and moving forward, but then awareness came, and then there had to be teaching for a direction, and that is when our particular master came in. Oh, okay. 
And is it something like on the earth we say that we have to go through Jesus to be resurrected or saved? Is, was it like that as well? Let me put it this way. Whenever someone comes with that message, then others believe that you have to go through them to become saved. That person does not say it. It is the, those around them that put that stigma upon them because of their wisdom. It is those around them that say, this is the Messiah. This is the person you must listen to. This is that person. Now, I know they have recorded that Jesus said that he was who who he agreed that he was the savior that was not true he did not agree to that but others around him believed it now so, yes now on our planet it happened the same there's many people that believed that this person could save the world and so they put that they put that stigma on them Mm -hmm. and therefore, that stigma lasted for many, many thousands of years. I see. And so how did the ascension actually happen? Did you have to go through a lot of um, darkness and, and cat catastrophe first, catastrophe before ascension? The ascension happens as it happens. When a people is ready to grow and, and they get help from others, yes, others, other planets and species helped us as well. So, so it is just something that the universe does for its children. Each of its planets has its time of a specific, particular, important growth, and the universe helps with that. Okay. And when you were born, Lakesh, <laughs> how far ahead was the ascension already established on your planet? Do you <laughs> born into ascended it was, it was up. It was finished. The ascension. Okay. I I was born into telepathy. Okay, that's awesome. Okay, can you name the person who helped you? Your planet, the the master, the teacher. Did you not hear? Oh no, I was wondering if you had meant if you um could mention the name of the master who helped your planet ascend. Kel Frost. Ah, uh, okay. And was it just a man or was it a man and a woman or male, female or, or how was that? As it was a male but he had a female counterpart eventually. It was not original to his birth, of course. Mm -hmm. But okay. yes, women helped him, men helped him. He was, he had many attachments, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Lakesh. You're welcome. <laughs> good to see you. Namaste. Very good. Thank you. Um, Jasmina, do you have any questions? I have to go very Yes, quick. hello. Hello, Jasmina. Hello, how, uh, much love to you. Much love to you as well. I was just wondering if you have any questions, uh, messages for me. At this time, one moment. I do not right now. There may be one coming, but it is not ready yet. All right. Uh, so you're in the time right now that that. A message may not be a good. It may not be a good thing for you at the moment. So, in a little while, perhaps a month down the road, a message may be good for you. But you are going right. to something now where a message is not good for you at this time. Okay. So then, I just want to ask you if I am still going to the colony. Are you going to the colony? Is that what you said? I did not. Yes, hear I want. If I still, if I am still going to the colonies, yes. Yes, you are. The cur will know how many times. I do not know how many times, but you have been in colony one and two for sure, and perhaps even four. But I know of one and two for sure. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much.
I let's go very shortly. Thank you. This is Hayan. Hello. Hello. This is Hayan. Hayan. Yes. Yes. Um, Haya, have I uh, been uh, getting new? Uh, what's this uh, for teleportation? This uh, implants. You have the teleportation device. Yes, it is in uh, your. Implant. All I have something new in my left side of my left uh, leg. Ah. And okay. my brother also got that on the same night. We woke up and we both had a mark or something. On the left side under the knee? No, upper leg. Upper leg. One moment, I'll check and see what that is. I do not know it right offhand. It would appear to be, but I cannot say for sure. It looks like reptilian, but I do not. I will ask to occur. One moment. I cannot. I cannot speak clear in that realm. But you can understand me. I'm so glad. I hear insectoids. She is not sure if it is reptilian. She will look into it and get back to you on that. Jim will right. send you a text. <laughs> okay. They do not know exactly what that is right now. Yeah, yeah. But both right. of you have it, so it must be something interesting. So we will look into that. Yeah, I thought so as well. Okay, a uh, general thing. How is the other colonies, or I mean the Ashtar Command or the Federation of Light, uh, they are, probably know about us. What do they think about us? Do they... They, are, they know that we resonate well. This human colony. However, they're not sure if they want to be part of it yet, and I'll tell you why. Because it is so different than what they're used to. Uh, it is a different format for, for expressing feelings and understandings. You understand? It, it, it's closer knit than they could ever possibly wish to be. And in some ways, they don't want to destroy that. So they, they actually like the personalization part of it. However, I believe that they will become part of you eventually. And I believe they resonate with you very well. And as JC has said, they do have many communications with uh, human colony. They do. Many of them do. Many of those 13,000 people come and look and check us out and check you out and check out the different things that are there. Yes. Um, I was, I would think that they would communicate in in some way. Well, it's seem because I, I seem to have a connection with them also. Yes. Um, they connect, they connect on a one to one basis and not as a group. Oh, okay. I I see what you're saying. Like fish. Is no Um. What? Hello. Hello. Who this, is speaking? This is Noha. Oh, Aloha, how are you? How are you? I need to have any messages for me, please. Uh, your work is going well. Let's see. Telepathy, messages, uh, channeling, anything of this. You are, yes, you are thinking about your channeling situation sometimes. You would like to learn how to channel. You will be going to the to the colonies to learn this, and this will happen for you. Right now, you are still new at fairly new at a job, and it is going well. Have you met someone just recently? Regarding what job? 
No, I meant relationship-wise. No, I haven't met anybody. Interesting. Because there is someone there. Someone I know, someone new, or someone that I, I know already? I that there is someone around you that is interested. I do not know if you are interested in them, though. But they are interested in you. That is all I can tell you. Okay. And how is my kids? Your what? My kids, my uh, Aditya and the girl, uh, Aline. They are very well. Okay, great. Thank you. I must go okay. now. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Lakesh. I must go, yes. Thank you, Lakesh. Namaste, everybody. Namaste. Thank you, Lakesh. Much love. Nice Namaste. talking to you. It's been fun. I haven't spoken to you for a long time. I know. Come again. Thank you. Hello. Water. Hi, Jim. Oh, hi, Jim. Hey, how are you? Good to see you. How are you? <laughs> how are you? Hello, Jim. Good. I'm doing very well. Doing Good. Good. How is everybody doing out there? Good. Hello, Jack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lakesh was must have stayed quite a while. The whole time. Yes. Yes. I'm glad he came. I I'm missed him. Lakesh hasn't been here in a while and somebody requested him over. So but um, wonderful. Is there anybody anything else anybody needs to talk about or uh, do you want to uh, talk? Yeah, I need to know something. Last time we were talking about the fourth dimension, and we are in three or four dimension. It depends. Are we in a yo-yo state? Sometimes we feel we're in the fourth, and then we're going down to the third. What's going on? Uh, well, you mentioned vibrations fluctuate, and um, everybody does have their own vibration. However, when you pull through, when you're grounded and pull through the third dimension into the fourth, then you're you're actually the strongest. That's when you're the strongest because you're attached to all to both dimensions, and you're able to communicate this back and forth between the both. Now, if you become ungrounded and you come back to the third or stay in the fourth dimension, you don't feel like you're you don't feel like you're communicating well. You don't feel like you're all together because you need to to get that grounding for everything to be good. Now, if you fall back into the third dimension and you're, and you're not in the fourth dimension at all, which is many people on Earth, many people that are like business-minded and things like that, that have businesses and things that keep them right close to the Earth and, and their thoughts close to everything that's third dimensional, uh, you can pull back up because you're, you're still grounded. But if you're in the third dimension and you're not grounded and you're not in the fourth dimension, you're more likely to be ADD, HDD, or whatever, all those things, uh, have some kind of mental function that doesn't work properly. Oh, really? Yes. So all of those children with that, that have all those um, attention deficit disorders... Right, they're not... They're not grounded. They come from ungrounded situations, and, and they're not fourth dimensional, so they're, they're stuck with a disconnect with their brain to the earth. Oh, that's interesting. So how, how do we help them? You help them by explaining what, how to be grounded and giving them things to do that bring them to a place of where they have to think about who they are and what they're doing right where they are, like studying, thinking, you know, learning things, uh, playing games, anything that will connect them to their thought processes uh, properly. Oh, okay. Um, 
Jim, do you, by, by any chance, do you know from what planet are the Fondorians? Because I can't find anything on the internet. I don't know if I'm not spelling it correctly. I don't even know how to spell it either. Fondorians are very, very high, and they just just recently started to talk about them because they're just recently interested in the Earth. They've been to the Earth many times, a thousand years ago or whatever, but they're now starting to reconnect with the Earth in the thought that we're doing ascension, and so they, they're sort of interested in that. Oh, okay, because Sean is very interested in talking with one, and I've been trying to find information, um, but I haven't been able to... I can tell you, when, tell you what they, one of them looks like. Okay. Actually, just like Earth, they have several different looks, but one look is that they're, um, they're short, they have human-like faces, only it looks like there's plaster on them. Pla white plaster. It okay. Like white plastered face. But they're, it's an interesting face. It's human with dark, very dark eyes and uh, a, like a white plastery on the face. That's one look. Okay. All right. They do Thank have you. a human look. They're short, though. They're very short. They have a human sort of look, but they're but different things on the faces. So are they in the same dimension as the Arcturians? Uh, yes, the Arcturians. They're around the same kind of dimension, I guess. Okay. All right, now I, I would assume that they interact in some way. Yes. All okay. right. Yeah, because I have I definitely have been feeling their presence lately. Uh, also, so excellent. Uh, yeah. A lot of people have asked about Fendorians lately, which is interesting because they're just just now starting to get uh, coming come back into our space. So yeah, yeah. I, I know I know. Sean would love to speak to a Fendorian. <laughs> I think I would actually blow up, like literally just blow up. Blow. <laughs> That would be cool to glow. Love that. <laughs> uh, I do not know when they're going to be reaching Earth again, but I know that some people have been seeing visions of them, things of that nature. So, anyway. Yeah. Well, did you want to start the closing procedure since it's yes, new yes. Uh, Let's. Do you want me to do yes. the prayer? Yes, yeah, Sabrina, will you do the prayer? Okay. Anybody else that wants to add to it, feel free because if it, if it resonates with you that you want to say something, then I think you should. So, if Thank you're you, in a prayerful mood, that's great. Thank you, Jim. Okay. Um. Toko to noru ya kari ya kata no 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 skuru wa toko kosoro to no no kosoro ko toko wa. Tomo na kalia kati yo soko to no no ko kolia kata ni kato sare ko to ko no no kolia na na kyo to ko lo ko sia to to no no kolia ni a sia kato sia la ka uno sare kato sare kato no no kolia sa na ni yo un turu ko sare kato no ko kolia na aso ko tu tata ni ko Olu tu sarakata nana ka tu aka iyo tu anu kuru tu tu sakati yu tu sanaku tu ria anu ku tu anu ku ala tu sakutu ku tu atu atu. The interpretation to that is. You have many visions and dreams, but you do not put any energy into them, so they cannot become reality. But this dream that you are living now, please put your energy into it so that your reality can become that of enlightenment and move forward in the spaces that are coming to you. And I understand that it is hard to see a vision without letting it go with a thought, because it does not seem real, but you see, your energy is what makes it real. 
And so take your energy and make those things in your life real that need to be real at this time. You can bring yourself up, you can flower, but not if you don't believe and not if you do not have the energy. So find yourself in a place of energy to make your realities from those things that are not in you. Thank you, Jim. Does anybody else have something to say? Okay. It seems nobody else has anything to say, so... Unless okay. somebody that's sitting next to you might want to say something. Anybody in the room here? <laughs> okay. I have a little leftover Lakesh in me, I think. <laughs> okay, so... Have a great well, day. Have a great day, everybody. And thank you. Thank, thank you all for coming. And those that have visited Jim. Thank, thank you, Jim. You. Thank you, new people. Yeah, and everybody. Thank you, Jim. Thank you very much. Everyone thank have a great you. day. Everybody you have a great day. Bye. Bye. Figure out how to do this. You just, uh, oh, you it's just see, where the, yeah. see where the phone is? You just, just, just leave. Yeah. The thing yeah. is, I have to get my mouse down to where it says stop the... Yes, the stop the live. Yeah. yeah, I'll try my leg here. Oh, here we go. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. I don't think my leg's big enough. Okay. <laughs> I can't see what I'm doing. Five minutes later. Bye-bye. 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 <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Now you need oh, to. The was upside down. There you go. Yeah. Bye -bye. Now you need to hang up. Yeah. Yeah.